Hello, people. Today, I'm going to talk about working for a client, when not to work for a client. I've already, I've, I should, I, when it's unethical to work for a client. I, I don't know. Sorry, I'm thinking about what to put as a title because I know I put something like when not to work for a client before. But anyway, when it's unethical to work for a client, uh, I want to talk about um, certain issues that that might come up while uh, you're working. In fact, probably some variation of these issues will come up and things to keep in mind about working for a client and when it might be very unethical. I mean, obviously, if they're breaking the law or asking you to break the law, don't work for them. I, I think I should put that out there. That's unethical, immoral and illegal. But. Uh, there, there are other circumstances where things can pop up that maybe you're wondering what to do. So I want to help out with that, which, you know, are, are kind of more likely. Um, and the first one, so here's a situation that might happen. Maybe you work or, you know, you're, you're in contact with a translation agency. A translation agency contacts you and says, hey, could you translate this document? Can you give me a quote and time frame for, you know, whatever document? And you see that the document is, uh, you know, you translate whatever language it might be. Let's say uh, Hungarian and you notice that it's a construction company from your same town in Hungary. And you're like, you start thinking, you're like, wait a minute, I could do this for this translation agency based out of London for this company right there. Or I could contact them, say, hey, I'm a translator. I'm right down the road from you guys. Uh, do you want me to do your translation for you? And you might be, you know, because everyone has their own language and specialty. So chances are they, you know, feel at some point, they're like, hey, I could contact them directly, probably get paid more. Why don't I try that? This is a bad idea, a very bad idea. And hopefully, you know, even if you think about it, you'll realize that you shouldn't do it. But let me go through it just in case and explain why it's a bad idea. And then I'll talk about some of the variations that can happen. First of all, it's a very bad idea. Here's what's going to happen 90% of the time. 90% of the time, that company there already has a relationship with the agency or signed a contract or, you know, something thereof. And, you know, they've been in contact with each other for a while. They know each other. They trust each other. 90% of the time, they will won't reply to you or else they'll say, like, oh, okay, we'll see, something like that. And then they'll contact that agency and be like, hey, we received this email. Any idea? Is this, you know, one of your people or, you know, what, like, you know, what's happening? And they'll do this, A, because, you know, they probably have a contract with that agency, so they don't want random people finding out that, uh, you know, that they need certain documents translated. You know, they don't want it out there in the open. So if they sign a contract with an agency, the agency signed a contract with you, trust me, somewhere in, in that contract, it says that you can't go talking around with other people. Even if they didn't make you sign a contract, um, that company is going to be mad that their, you know, information is flying around. And uh, yeah, they're not going to be happy about that. So it'll backfire. Let, let me just put it this way. It'll backfire um, more than 90% of the, 99% of the time. It's just going to backfire. You know, they already have a relationship with that agency. They're not going to, uh, you know, want to breach that relationship just because of one person. Also, they don't want their confidential, possibly documents all over the place and random people contact them and say, Hey, I got your confidential document. You want me to translate it? Because that could be very dangerous for them and they want it to be all contained. And so they're going to be mad for many reasons. And either way, they're not going to hire you. That company, by the way, the translation company, it will automatically get you out, blacklist you. You'll probably, in fact, they, they might even threaten you with legal, you know, uh, issues. They probably won't pursue it because it won't be worth it for them, but they'll definitely, you know, have their lawyers write up something for you. And, you know, chances are you could get blacklisted from all the, uh, uh, you know, the, the translation websites, so, you know, pros, translators, cafe or stuff like that. Sorry, I heard something. Um, but anyway, the uh, it's. I hope no one's coming to rob my place. No, okay. So, but where was I? Right. So uh, either way, it's going to be very bad, and uh, you, you don't want to risk it. And so it's always a big no-no. Do not, even if it says right there, you know, whatever construction company, and you're like, hey, I, I know them, and uh, you know, I know what company that is. Don't contact them directly. Just deal directly with a translation agency like you would with anything and then that's it use your knowledge of that area for the translation itself and do a good job maybe in the future you know at some point in time when you feel ready and and all that that can be one of the companies you contact but you know you can contact all the local companies to try to see if you can establish a relationship with them directly 
Um, by the way, you know, they, they probably translate in a couple different languages. So they much rather deal with the translation agency than you. Even if you charge a bit less for your specific translation, they don't have time to find people in 10 different languages. They're going to deal with that agency and that's it. So yeah, it's really not worth it. And here's what, here's another scenario. 99% of the time, that's what's going to happen. But 1% of the time they might actually email you and say, okay, yeah, you do the translation for cheaper. That's better. First of all, that agency is going to find out. Like I said, they have a contract, they have a relationship. If there's been a breach or if, you know, the client all of a sudden says, no, we found someone else to do it or something like that, they're going to get suspicious. They'll probably figure it out. Like I said, someone at that agency has been talking to someone at that company for years now and yeah, they'll, they'll figure it out and they'll, or they'll know because they only contacted two different translators to work on this. You're one of them and you know, they'll figure out that it was you. So it'll still backfire. Even if you get that one job, that's it. You won't get any repeat business. Also from that company, you probably won't get any repeat business because you know, when they think about it, they'll realize, Hey, that was pretty backhanded what that guy did. So, you know, they'll think you're a pretty, you know, not honest guy or girl or gal. And, uh, and you'll at some point realize, well, that company is also not too honest because even if they have a relationship with me, or even if they make me sign a contract, they probably made that other agency sign a contract and you know, that didn't help the relationship. So anyway, it's not a good way to establish anything long-term. And if you want to make money in this business, it has to be long-term. You need to establish a relationship. I've said this before, you have to do it that way. So absolutely. If this comes across your radar and you think, Oh, Hey, what about, what if I do this? What if I do that? Don't do it. That's it. Now I want to talk about another situation that might happen. Then in fact did happen to me. What might happen is that this same agency contacts you say, Hey, we need this translated Hungarian to English or whatever. And, uh, can you help us out? And you're, and you're like, okay, that sounds good. And then you get another email from that company directly to you saying, Hey, well, we realized you're a translator in our area. And, uh, we were wondering if you could translate our documents for me. This happened to me. And so I'll tell you what I did. And then, and then you can make your own judgment. Cause actually since then I've been wondering if I did the right thing or not. Um, I mean, I stand by what I did, but anyway, we'll see. So the, uh, the agency contacted me, asked me to translate. And then, you know, a bit later, like an hour or two later, I got an email from that end client for the exact same document to be translated. What I ended up doing was I ended up, cause I had a relationship with that agency. I've been working with them for a while. And so I emailed them and I was just transparent. I was like, uh, I got an email from the end client to work on this. Um, and they, cause it, I had a set rate with the agency and the client, um, said they will pay me more than my rate. I don't know what the agency charged them. I don't care. That wasn't part of, you know, whatever I told everything to the client and, um, and the client or to, to, sorry, to the agency, I told everything and the agency were cool about it. You know, they like, well, it's your prerogative. If you want to work for them, you can or not. I ended up not working for them because again, you know, it just seemed very backhanded and, you know, kind of bad and all that. I'm still working with the agency to this day and we have a great relationship. We ended up not doing any translations for that company. I think that agency dropped that company as well, but, uh, yeah. And you know, I just, I was like, if I'm going to make a mistake, let's make it on the side of transparency. So at least I can sleep soundly at night. It won't come back to bite me in the ass, like in years to come or something like that. And yeah, so that's what I did. Uh, and you know, so I'm, I stand by what I did. I'm sort of wondering if it happened again, if I would do the same thing, like part of me thinks I just don't even want to, you know, I'll just tell both parties, sorry, I'm not available. And then not deal with it at all, not enter into part of this whole thing, but I don't know. So, I mean, if this has happened to you and if you have any advice, feel, please let me know. Um, I'd be really interested to hear. But, uh, you know, I just think in any case, obviously you shouldn't pursue and try to, an end client if you already have been the agency, but even if the end client contacts you, if you already have a relationship with that agency, it seems really backhanded to undermine them and go directly to, uh, you know, to that end client. So anyway, that's what I did. I, uh, I would suggest that you, if you're going to make a mistake, once again, make a mistake on the side of transparency because in the long term, it's always better to do that. And it's just, it's better for business too. Let's face it in the long term, um, because you want to establish these relationships, which then you can build your business on rather than trying to make an extra cent here and an extra little bit there, but then be blacklisted and not have repeat business at all. So yeah, <laughs> hopefully you found that helpful. Uh, please like this video if you do, because it always helps. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't down at the subscription button somewhere down there. 
and uh, and yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.